Uh, the media, meanwhile, is upset over uh, uh, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin meeting at that uh, G20 gathering. It was a conversation, whatever you want to call it, but the venue is what's got them upset. I wondered why. So, Donald Trump had a second meeting with Vladimir Putin, and we are upset. Why? Because we in the media didn't know about it prior or because we just want to pile on about it now. You know, for the life of me, I'm really at a loss on this one and why this is even an issue. I mean, these guys were not holed up alone at some super secret location. They were at a group of 20 summit of world leaders in Germany. This was at a dinner for those leaders. All the leaders knew about it. They were all there. Not a one, from what I can see, wearing a disguise. Look at that table! They talked, they mingled, they moved around. You know, the sort of thing that world leaders do at a meeting of world leaders. The same media, famous for saying leaders should talk, just not this one, and break bread, not war, just not this one, and work together on solving crises, not making new ones, just not this one. Stop. Just stop. You are trying very hard to mask a hate that is now too over the top. Go after the president on things that matter, not the silly things that don't. It is fair game to say the president might have dropped the ball on health care. We said it on this show. But to say he did the same dropping in on a world leader at the same table, look at that table! <laughs> Everyone's there. It's like five Cavuto family reunions. All right, we call him as we see him here, but the whole thing about go after Donald Trump, and, and we do on issues that matter. We figure we have time to do the good and the bad because there are so many 24-hour business networks, news networks. On. We figure get into everything, but this, this thing was silly to me. Uh, and that common sense is getting quite a bit of reaction. As we speak, Abucci on Twitter writes, if Donald Trump starts riding around shirtless on a horse, the media can worry about Russian influence, but until then... Can they focus on us? And it's Catherine on Facebook. I'm so over all this BS. If it was reported that Trump ate cornflakes for breakfast, the deranged left would find issue with that. And then Linda on Facebook. It was not a meeting. It was a conversation. Come on, Neil. My point is the obsession over whether it was a meeting or a conversation, it doesn't matter. It was in front of the world and all the world's leaders and their spouses and all their respective Camera crews, everyone caught it, everyone saw it. So if you're trying to hide it, it didn't work. It was too clever by half, I guess. To Washington Times columnist Madison Jesiotto, conservative reviews, Deneen Borelli, and Democratic strategist Christy uh, Setzer. So, Christy, ended with you. I, I just found this obsession crazy. But believe me, and we do it here go away after him on the things that matter, like this sudden obsession with still going after Jeff Sessions when he should be focused on all things economic. Um, mm. Fair game. This not fair game. What do you think? I 100% disagree. I think that if you were an alien who came down from Mars and knew nothing about the November elections, you didn't know that Putin had in fact hacked the U.S. elections to Donald Trump's benefit. You didn't know that Donald Trump actually called on Russia to, you know, unleash Hillary's emails and go through them. You didn't know that Don Jr. was meeting with all kinds of No, that's of not my question. Russians. If you knew then, if they had know, or talked yeah, to each other in a conversation suspicious. or a meeting and they were at a yeah. dinner and that raised suspicions when everyone it saw did. it and knew about it, is that so wrong? That's all I'm saying. Of, of, well, I don't know if it's so wrong because we don't know, but is it suspicious? It certainly is because this was on top of a two plus hour meeting that they had had recently already that in itself was only I thought the left likes hour. it when world Why leaders meet. So I thought close. the left liked the world leaders meeting and talking over stuff. Uh, yeah, we don't really necessarily like the fact that our president seems to have what I see as a submissive relationship to the president of whoa, Russia. Well, 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 Chris, I love you dearly, but come on. Then when Barack yeah. Obama was confiding with his, uh, the, the former Russian president, Medvedev, about I have to wait past this election before we could do anything, to paraphrase him here, and that hey, was look, caught on an open mic, have, yeah. did you have a problem with that? Lots of other people have tried and, and frankly failed to have a relationship with Russia before because no, that's they have what I said. Did you decided... have a problem with that? Because that we caught on Mike. That we did know what he said. Uh, did I have a problem with that? That was very much before Russia hacked the U.S. election. So I have to no, think that the see, context changes a little bit. you can't pick and choose it. Denine, that's what I'm saying. I, I admire Christian Radio, but I find different. a lot of picking and choosing going on here. 
<laughs> Neil, listen, I'm in that. Las Vegas today, and let me just tell you that the left and the media has gone all in with anything Russia. They have bet the house. Listen, the media is a left-wing arm of the left-wing party. And listen, when you, when you look at how they're going after Donald Trump, going after his family, going after anybody, really what they are doing is a disservice to the country because what they should be doing is reporting on issues that people care about, issues that are important to our country. Yeah, but Janine, the president gets a lot of that himself when he goes on, when he sidetracks on silly stuff, right? I mean, you have to... I'm not condoning all the other stuff that's going on here. I am saying this president hurts himself with this stuff. I don't think this meeting, or whatever you want to call it, or this, you know, dinner conversation that apparently everyone knew about, um, is is right. the issue. I think it's this president sometimes feeds the beast with this, with this stuff, doesn't he? Denise. Well, listen, I, I, I think it's great that he is able to go on Twitter because he's going around the media that absolutely hates him. He needs to stick get to out topic. more on I think the issues, go to out topic. to the rallies, and, this, this is and not, talk this, to Americans. Well, all right, fine, but I, 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 you can tweet all you want, but tweet to topic and don't go off on tangents. So, Madison, that's my worry. This issue, this meeting at this you know, global gathering of leaders and their spouses and their translators, this is not one of them. I just don't think it's one of them. What do you think? Right, and let me reiterate what you said at the beginning of this segment, and that's that President Trump is the President of the United States. He's at a dinner for world leaders, and he talks to another world leader, and the media goes crazy over this. And what's most ironic about this is during the campaign, they were complaining that President Trump had a past in reality TV. And what's ironic about that is that they're now seeming to wish that this was a reality TV show now. No, I don't even think it's a reality TV show. It kind of reminds me of Hogwarts and Harry Potter. <laughs> Well, I, I think, I, but, Neil, but what the they want is every single thing he does in advance. No, no, no. Well, the idea that you can keep something secret there with that many people, that many cameras, everyone's looking around. And I understand there are a lot of leaders there who don't flip over Donald Trump. They're going to extra notice if he ignores them and goes over to Vladimir Putin. But, but that might be catty, but it's not a conspiracy. So, Christy, that's what I'm saying. That is not the making of a conspiracy there. It's not a conspiracy, but he's put us, he's put us at a serious disadvantage. One um, item that we haven't discussed yet is the fact that only Russia had an interpreter there. So they're the only ones who have a transcript of what was said. They're so the what? only ones that... So right, what? And I think that's, that's problematic. That's problematic. Do you have Why any, did, did you have any problem? I know way before you were born. But did you have any problem of, of John Kennedy meeting with Nikita Khrushchev? And there was no transcript of those powwows when they're talking about you know, limiting nuclear weapons and that sort of thing. So did it bug you then, or your parents, or your grandparents then, <laughs> right, yeah, that there was no yet. transcript of that meeting, just ultimately an agreement that was scored years later, months before he died? What matters? Yeah, look, I, th I think it's unfortunate that we can no longer take the president's word on all things Russia because not he and the, everyone around him has lied about it. it. it well, I, I'm not here as a right or left person on this. This president doesn't flip over me or this show. And by the way, I barely like myself. But, Deneen, <laughs> I'm looking at this in all seriousness and saying, surely there are bigger issues to address. I chastised the president at the opening of this broadcast, chastising his attorney general, still fixated on whether he should have recused himself, still fixated on, on what, that, the, what that created and the investigations that followed. Get over it, Mr. President. That's what I said. But this, this dinner and the timing and who speaks to whom, waste of time. What do you think? I agree, and that's what we're seeing in the headlines now, which is very unfortunate. And listen, a lot of Americans want to get past anything that's Russia because they've been investigating forever. They haven't found anything, and they really need to move forward to get our agenda spearheaded and to talk about uh, the president's position on energy, our energy independence, which would create jobs and better the economy. Talk about issues that really affect well, America. Well, then I, I agree that, but basis. Madison, then to that point, then it's the president himself who has to avoid making these kind of distractions when he tells the New York Times and revisits this whole session's thing, genuinely disturbed and angry about it, and I understand that. But I think as Doris Kearns Goodwin, the historian, put out, you know, you never want to see, or good presidents really never want the world to be seen sweating. Uh, you might be sweating and cursing and doing a lot of other things in private, but you don't want to give that advantage to your, to your enemies, do you? Right, and I think regardless of what he says to the media, they're going to continue to cover him negatively. And Harvard actually just came out with a report 
saying that they've covered the first 100 days of coverage by all the mainstream media outlets as well as Fox News and others, and they saw that over 80% of coverage was negative towards Donald Trump, which is uh, just unheard of. President Barack Obama had 41%. Other presidents were 60 or under, and so this is something that's never really happened before. He really is in a war against the mainstream media, which is very unfortunate because, like I said, regardless of what he says, they're going to draw the attention away from his main goal, which is continuing to best serve the American people, and that's why he was elected. People want to be better served by their president. President, just as they want to be better served by Congress, and I think we could see some changes in 2018. And he's got to stay focused. Lines. Not worry about a dust up over a dinner, but I think he's got to stay focused as well. And many have to, you know, sort of take a chill pill here, step back, and prioritize what's going to tick them off. And I don't know if this is in that category. That again is, is my opinion. And remember, the right and the left hate me, and I feel vulnerable <laughs> at times.